All right, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Vue's vModel directive under the hood. What we're gonna cover is what is the vModel directive? How does the vModel directive work under the hood? Using vModel on a component, and we're also gonna be looking at vModel arguments and modifiers. So let's get started. Now in Vue, we have what is called the vModel directive to simply achieve two-way binding. Two-way binding is when you sync up a value of an input to a piece of state. Let's take a look at a common example. Here we have a reactive variable using the ref method along with an input with a type of text. To sync up the value of the input to the ref, we can add the vModel directive and set it equal to our ref. Then as the input gets updated, the value of the ref will also be updated to the input's current value. So how exactly does this work? Well, under the hood, the vModel directive binds a value of the input to the ref. Then using the input event listener, it takes the event that we have access to each time the event is triggered off the input, and it's going to set the value of the ref equal to the current target dot value. And instead of defining all this logic, the vModel directive simplifies this process and takes care of all of this for us by simply just using this directive. So the vModel directive is not only limited to text inputs, you're also able to use them on various input types such as checkboxes, radios, and select inputs. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. When using this directive on an input with a type of checkbox, the value of the ref will either be true or false depending on whether the checkbox has been selected or not. If you do want to give the data a specific value on true or false, you can actually use what is called the true value and false value attributes to assign custom values. And these values can also be dynamic by utilizing vBind. So as we toggle the checkbox, you can see the custom values being outputted. Or if you're not using the true value and false value attribute, then the value being outputted will either be true or false. On a radio input, the value of the vModel directive will be set to the value attribute on the radio input. So if you had two radio inputs, for example, you'd want to sync both of these up to the same data using the vModel directive and then give them different values. And as you toggle between the two, the value will be updated accordingly based on the selection. And these values can also be dynamic by utilizing vBind. Lastly, when using select inputs, the value of the vModel will be set to the value attribute on the option that was selected. Again, this value can also be dynamic by utilizing vBind. For example, if the value on an option was set to an object with multiple properties, the value of the data would be the entire object on the option chosen. All right, now that we understand the basics of the vModel directive, let's take a look at how to use it on a reusable input component. When the vModel directive is attached to a component, under the hood it now looks a little bit different. The binded value, which will be a prop on this component by default, is called model value. And then it's listening for an event called update colon model value, which is taking in the new value and updating our ref. So let's configure things up in the reusable input component. We'll need to define a prop to accept the model value, and we're also going to define a emit for an event that we're going to be emitting called update colon model value. Then on the input, we're going to bind the value to the model value prop, and we're also going to listen for the input event and send along an inline emit of the update colon model value event, and we're also going to send along with it the current value of the input. And now using the vModel directive on this component, things will work as expected. Now another way you can set up a reusable input component is through what is called a writable computed property. Instead of having to define the value and event listener on the input, we can actually take advantage of using the vModel directive within this component. And I actually just found out about this method recently and now it's my preferred way to handle these. So what we'll want to do is still define our prop and emit, but in addition we're going to define a new computed property. Within here we're going to define both a getter and a setter. Now normally when you're using a computer property you're usually only defining what is called a getter. So for the getter we're going to return the prop model value. And for the setter this is going to accept a parameter for the value and within the setter we're going to emit the event of update colon model value and then send along the value. Then on the input we can replace the binded value and also the event listener and just use the vModel directive and set it equal to the new computer property that we just created. And now if we test things out, again the component will still work as expected. 
Now by default, the vModel directive when used on a component uses the model value as the prop and update colon model value as the event. However, you are actually able to modify this by passing an argument to the vModel directive. So for this example, we could call the prop something like first name by saying vModel colon first name. Then instead of the prop being called model value in this component, we would update this to first name. And then we would also want to update the name of our emit to update colon first name. Now, I personally don't do this all too often. However, a use case for this would be that maybe you have two inputs in your component. You can name them accordingly using an argument on the vModel directive and then define those within the component like in this example. Now, the last thing we're going to cover is vModel modifiers. The vModel directive has several different modifiers such as trim, number, and lazy. I'm not going to cover them all here in this video, but the one I find myself using the most is the lazy modifier. If you do want to learn more about the additional two, I will leave a link down below in the description to the documentation. What the lazy modifier does is instead of listening for the input event, it now listens for the change event which on a text input, for example, is when the input focuses out. To use it, all you need to do is append .lazy to the end of the vModel directive. I also do want to mention that you can chain along multiple modifiers to the vModel directive. And now when updating the input, it no longer updates on the input event and will only get updated once the change event is triggered, which for this text input, like I mentioned, is when we focus out. Now, if we attempt to use this lazy modifier on our reusable input component, it's not going to work as expected. So when using modifiers on a component, there is actually a prop we gain access to called model modifiers. This is an object containing the modifiers currently attached to the vModel directive. Now, to implement modifiers while using a component, there are a few solutions that I found, but certainly let me know if there are better ways to work around this. So when using the writable computer property method, you could use a simple vif directive to check to see if the lazy modifier is present. If it is, we can just attach the lazy to this vModel directive, otherwise we can just render out the input with the normal vModel directive. Another solution that I found that doesn't use a writable computer property is to create two custom functions, one for on change and one for on input. And I actually came across a solution from a post on GitHub from this user here. So in the first function, which is on change, what you want to do is you need to check the model modifier object and what you want to do is see if the lazy property is true. If so, then we can emit our update event. Then in the on input function, which is going to be very similar, we just want to check to see if that value is false. And if so, then we can emit the update event. And on the input, you're going to bind the model value prop to the input and then listen for both the input and change event and trigger the corresponding functions for each. And then if we test this out, things should work as expected. If we append the lazy modifier to this vModel directive, then it's only going to update on the change event. And then if we remove it, then it's going to work as it normally did, where it's going to update with the input event. And as I mentioned, let me know if you have some better workarounds for this. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this video on the vModel directive. If you did enjoy this and you want to see more videos that go over concepts like this in more depth, let me know by leaving a comment down below and dropping a like on this video. And if you are new here, be sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.